Hello, uh, my name is Grant Yocum. I'm going to be your instructor for Phil 1300 or Introduction to Ethics this semester if you are enrolled in Section 60 or Section 70. That's CRN 11141 and um, 1366, 13366, respectively. Um, so this is winter 2019. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be your instructor. Uh, this is largely the way that I'm going to uh, deliver my portion of the, the class material uh, via YouTube lectures, uh, which are going to be uploaded to Moodle uh, regularly as per the class schedule. And um, I do have on-campus office hours from 5.15 to 6 p.m., uh, plus by appointment if you need to see me, I'm coming on Wednesdays. Um, I teach a night course, a night section of this class. Um, that's something to keep in mind as well. If you're feeling lost and um, want an on-campus um, uh, something or other, please contact me and uh, feel free to uh, drop into my night class, um, which meets in South Foundation Hall um, at 6.30 till 9.50 on Wednesday evenings. Anyhow, my office is um, uh, located in the Math and Science Center, uh, room 642, so that's sixth floor into the hall. Um, it's a shared office. There are four desks that something like eight of us share um, in, in there. Plus, uh, you've got my email address. Uh, you can get a hold of me. So, um, my background uh, is in philosophy, of course, right? Um, I did graduate training in philosophy. I've recently, um, I've recently gotten a PhD in interdisciplinary humanities, so if you're feeling fancy, it's doctor, but I don't stand on that. And um, this is my 15th year uh, teaching for Oakland University. So, um, I did not just fall off the turnip truck uh, with regard to this. Um, I'm a commuter, which is why it's a benefit that I teach these online courses. Uh, and um, it's, I've been doing intro to ethics. I think this is, I'm going to teach up to my 53rd section of introduction to ethics uh, this semester. So, I have quite a lot of experience teaching this course and this course at Oakland University. Um, so this will be a completely online course uh, and um, no, no required class meetings. You'll be submitting assignments through Moodle. Uh, you'll be getting course instruction through Moodle. You'll be interacting with forums for class participation through Moodle, etc., etc. So um, what I'm going to do today is first welcome you to the class. Welcome. Um, and then uh, these headings here uh, are going to list uh, different videos on various topics uh, that are part of this playlist that I've forwarded you. So um, the welcome portion gives you an overview of the course, the readings. I'm going to talk about each of the, um, the many books that um, I had you buy, all of which should be um, yeah, available through uh, the, the, the Oakland University Bookstore. If you check on um, online, you should be able to find lots of co uh, copies of them. Most are very, very common books. I'll say a few words about each of the theory uh, theorists in the second video. Um, assignments uh, will be the third video uh, in this, in which I'll lay out the various sort of grade-carrying um, assignments. Uh, that go along with this course. Uh, then we will move on to my least favorite uh, uh, section, the policies, and I'll conclude with some notes about uh, grading and my grading scale. So um, that will be how this goes. Um, so yeah, I'm a commuter. I come from Windsor. I've got a background in ethics. I've been at this a really long time. Um, I hold a PhD, I've got a background in philosophy, and I've been for with Oakland University for a decade and a half. Uh, the course catalog description, which is um, it, 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 straight from the Office of the Registrar, you found it on the website, um, four credit hours, um, a major ethical analysis of right and wrong, good and evil, from the ancient Greeks to the present, appeals to custom, theology, happiness, reason, human nature will be examined, 
as offering viable criteria for judgment on contemporary issues of moral, moral concern, offered every semester, satisfies the university gen ed requirement in the Western Civilization Knowledge Exploration Area. So um, that is what we are doing. Uh, there are going to be three sections to this class. We start with the ancients, we move to the moderns, and then we move to uh, two theorists that I just kind of uh, classify as the postmodern or as pre-postmodern, maybe, right? Uh, we can debate whether there is such a thing as postmodern. It's, it's a subject of debate. Um, so my job is to introduce you to these texts. Um, my job is to uh, get you thinking about what it is that establishes a viable basis for what we call a normative claim. A normative claim is a should claim or an ought claim. You should do this, you sh ought not to do that, right? So on what basis can we make such claims? So what I've done is I've selected six theorists, all of whom establish some sort of a basis for these kinds of normative or prescriptive kind of claims. It's the same notion as a prescription. Your doctor gives you a prescription. They're saying you should take these as directed in order to benefit your health or overcome an illness or for whatever reason the doctor has, right? Now, um, whether such prescriptions are valid is a matter of concern for us. Right? So I always start off this course by pointing out that students should be a little bit leery of these prescriptive, normative, should, or ought claims because each and every one of these guys are trying to tell you what to do. Right? So really at the end of the day, right, what this course is an analysis of is your freedom. Because if I say you should do this, what I'm saying is you should choose to do this. And I'm at the same time acknowledging that you could at the same time choose not to do this. So I'm supplying you an argument of why you should not make the alternative choice as well. Right? So um, we will examine this uh, throughout the course of the semester. Now, um, the, the Gen Ed objectives for this course are sort of important here. right? Um, to introduce students to the important historical texts in ethical theory, so students, texts, text students, um, uh, to uh, show students how to uh, how theories about ethics have developed over time. So it's got to be a historical approach, right? So we go ancient, modern, postmodern. Um, in addition to the Western Civilization area, um, this course also includes cross-cutting capacities of effective communication and critical theory. Uh, critical, not theory, thinking, uh, it's my, my, my own training coming out there. Um, as such, it accomplishes the following, uh, following further objectives to develop st students' facility in reading and analyzing theories learned in class. So, um, it, I have to make sure you know what the heck is going on in terms of these theories and in terms of the readings. So you're responsible for the readings. And your job is to come up with sort of an cogent analysis of the ethical theories that we're reading. Uh, to develop students' facility in writing uh, creatively and clearly about ethical questions. Right. Okay, so uh, the Office of the Registrar and Oakland University have just told us that this is going to have to be a writing intensive course. Right? It, which I think is one of the most important tasks that this course engages with, because where do we argue about ethics in contemporary society? Online, for the most part, right? So being able to clearly and concisely get your argument across in a written format is an important skill. I don't care what your discipline is. If you're nursing, you're going to be making an argument about policy. Policy should be this way. It will benefit patients. It will it, it relieve stress for the, the staff on the, 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 the floor we're on, etc., etc., etc. Right? So what we're going to do is develop your facility to analyze arguments, 
to make arguments, to clearly articulate your position in writing. Right? And then finally, um, to help students learn how to apply ethical theory to concrete situations. So examples are going to be key. Um, I offer a lot of examples and there will be questions that I ask you on the various tests for this course where you are to provide examples that illustrate the theorist's position. Right? One last thing um, about uh, the, the ethical theory, just in very general terms here that we're going to be studying. Right? You're not going to agree with a lot of it. I don't agree with a lot of it. Your job isn't to agree to it. Right? I'm not trying to get you to adopt the positions that these theorists argue. It wouldn't be a philosophy course if I did. Right? All I need you to do, to do is understand the kinds of arguments that they're making. Understanding is the first step to critique. Right? And ultimately, at, this end, at the end of this course, I would like you to be able to offer succinct critiques and take a critical stance to ethical theory and ethical prescriptions because people are going to be telling you what to do for the rest of your life. You ought to be able to say, wait, hold on, why are you claiming that? Is that a good reason, a valid reason, a succinct reason, a cogent reason? Does that even make any bloody sense for why I should choose and act in a particular way? Because the first step of ethical theory, the only reason it makes sense whatsoever, is on the assumption, on the principle that we're free and can choose. Why? Because it makes no sense for me to say you should do this rather than that if you can't choose to do either. All right? So this is a course about managing your freedom. Now in what follows, I'm going to go over in very general terms um, the various texts that um, uh, we're, we're going to engage with. I'm going to do a great breakdown and say some words um, about um, the evaluation section of the syllabus. Um, I'm going to move on to policies and um, I'll say right now the policy section, it keeps growing. Right, of my syllabus. It keeps growing. The only reason I have policies is because I've had problems in the past and I'm a great believer in solving problems before they become problems. So these policies, it may seem like I'm criminalizing you even before you start, but that's not the case. That's not the case. I'm just trying to be nice and clear, right? And it handles problems throughout the semester before they're even problems. If I have a policy section. It's my least favorite because I say, hey, you shouldn't do this. And you haven't done anything, and I'm sure you're perfectly fine people. Right? So, anyhow, um, grading and feedback will also be in the policies and procedures section. Um, and uh, right off the bat, at this early point in the video, I should mention to you that this course, given that it's an online course, relies on the notion that you're going to have reliable access to reliable, uh, reliable technology. Now, um, a couple of things that you can do, and look at that, I don't have one, it must be in my book bag, is come up with a technology backup plan. This is an external hard drive. I back up everything on my computer in terms of this external hard drive. And I'll show you something else. This is my backup laptop. I'm recording this video on my principal laptop. I have a backup laptop and all of my data saved elsewhere. And I should add that my backup laptop now has a backup laptop as well. Right, so um, it's important if we are going to succeed and actually meet the uh, the requirements of this course that we have some sort of a technology backup plan, because these things fail. I actually have an external keyboard right now because my principal keyboard is shot and I need it replaced. Right, 
these things break down quite often. Right? If your hard drive goes bumpity bump up and you lose all of your data, that's where your external hard drive comes in so you don't lose everything. Right? So technology backup plans. Um, the cloud works great as well. Um, if you have any sort of problems or issues with regard to the instructional technology used in this course, like logging into Moodle or submitting assignments or anything along those lines, um, I, I have uh, included a link and the phone number for, um, uh, for, for, for uh, e-learning and instructional support here. But um, it, beyond that, I will be posting quite a bit to Moodle. Right. Um, I've actually set everything up so that new material uh, roughly every two weeks pops up on Moodle for you to engage with. It's your responsibility to log in frequently and keep up to date with the course. I'm not going to be emailing you all the time. Um, this welcome and introductory email is a special case. Right. So um, to log in to Moodle, what you do is um, Go to Moodle at oakland.edu. That's that's where it is, right? It, you find Moodle on the Oakland page, and um, use your uh, username and your password. It's the same one you use from your email. So um, that's easy peasy. And um, so, nonetheless, right? That's that's what we're dealing with. Um, it's wonderful. This allows us um, a certain degree of flexibility, which I bow to uh, in terms of online teaching. I'm sure you've all got jobs. That's one of the reasons why you take an online course, because you can't make it regularly to the campus, right? And I see that your tuition is much higher than my tuition was when I was doing all of my degrees. So I bow to the necessity of doing it this way. Right. But whenever we gain a certain degree of flexibility, it depends on like things that tend to screw up. So it's important to have backups and it's important that your backups have backups um, as well. Nonetheless, um, intro to ethics, normative claims, um, hopefully it's going to be an interesting uh, semester. Um, I try to set up the course uh, by establishing a number of really interesting and timely tensions as well. Um, the first section uh, explores justice in the context of democracy right? um, it, and establishes a, t a tension between rights and duties. The second section of the course engages with happiness. Right? The third section of the course engages with um, duty. Right? The fourth section um, of the course engages with basically cost-benefit analysis, utility. Right? The fifth section takes a critical perspective to a historical understanding of ethical theory and establishes a bit of skepticism about the normative basis of, 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 of ethical theory um, throughout the history of Western philosophy. And then the final section for, uh, uh, puts front and center an emphatic notion of freedom, right, and its requisite notion of responsibility. So uh, throughout this course, hopefully what we'll be doing is engaging with very timely issues, issues that are of practical and political and moral concern to you as you live your life daily, right? Because an ethical theory that doesn't help you live your life is intellectual puzzle solving, I'm, as far as I'm concerned. And if these guys don't say something of practical import, because ethics is that part of philosophy that governs action, it's the theoretical account of the active part of the human life, well, if these guys don't have something practical or applicable to say to you, then they're not worth their salt. But nonetheless, I've picked authors that I think do. All right, um, video two will be about readings.